Welcome to Worship at Bethel, originating from Bethel Lutheran Church in downtown Madison, Wisconsin, and broadcast throughout the state and across the internet. A member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Rich in tradition with nearly 160 years of ministry. Rich in worship with services in English, Spanish, and Bhutanese. Bethel Lutheran Church is a vibrant urban congregation. Living lives of worship and praise. Loving one another through faith, community, and care. Serving all and God's world. And thriving by faithful stewardship. Join us for worship at Bethel. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Well, welcome to worship on this beautiful fourth Sunday in the season of Lent. And welcome to any newcomers and guests. We're very glad to have you worshiping with us today. We also want to welcome all those who are worshiping with us on television or even in the internet to thank you for making worship at Bethel part of your day. For all those who... Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who brings us out of captivity into freedom, out of the wilderness into the promised land, out of death into life. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and give us strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Together, let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from the second chapter of Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, 
which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the, into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they did not believe in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because of their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Roland Stewart. Uh, nothing? I don't expect it would, the name Roland Stewart, mean anything to anybody. But maybe I can let you know who he is here a little bit. I'll give you a couple of hints. He first appeared during the 1977 National Basketball Association Finals. Okay, how about a little bit more? He was wearing a big rainbow wig and he was dancing around a lot for the cameras. Maybe, oh, I see a few, I okay, got who he is. Roland wanted attention, and he wanted it desperately. He was hoping that by doing all of this stuff, dancing around, that the cameras would pick him up, and some Hollywood producer would sign him to a contract. He was so desperate that he carried to games with him a portable TV, and he would watch the game on the TV and position himself to whatever the cameras were pointing at so that he could be seen. But it didn't work. And he became very depressed. And one night, one late night, as he was watching TV, he saw a TV evangelist, and he had an idea. This will certainly get him attention. So he started to going to sporting events again, all over the world, big sporting events, wore his rainbow-colored wig, and he hold, held up a big sign that said, John 3, 16 on it. Yeah, now I see some of you going, yes, I remember seeing that guy. He was under the basket when people were doing free throws. He was in the end zone when there were field goals being kicked. He was everywhere. It got to the point that the TV networks got tired of him, and whenever they would see him, they'd make sure they changed their camera angles so he wouldn't be seen. But he wanted attention, and those signs got him the attention. We've seen a lot of signs around Madison over the last few years. Just down the street here at the Capitol, we've seen lots of protests and rallies, lots of signs being carried in the last week, we've seen a lot of signs. We've seen signs that read, Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, No Justice, No Peace. We've become a very upset people. We've become a divided people. We've been divided by political parties over the last few years. We've been divided over issues such as the place of, of unions in the workplace, 
And now we're being divided again by the death of a young man named Tony Robinson. A death that minimally, minimally raises the issue of racism. Let me be clear. I'm not saying that racism was involved in this because I don't know. But the issue has come back up to the surface again. It's all very disturbing. It's all very unsettling. We want answers to what happened, and those answers don't come quickly enough for us. As information gets released in small little segments, we often cringe and and we try to look away. We don't want to face the fact that racism could exist in this progressive city of Madison. We don't even want it to be part of our conversation. We desperately want what happened to be anything, anything but racially motivated. But we don't know. As a preacher this week, I'm I'm greatly disturbed by these events. I'm disturbed because it seems that the events are demanding some kind of comment from me. I'm equally disturbed by today's gospel that's also staring me in the face because it also demands a comment as well. Frankly, I'm not excited about either one of them. But they demand commentary. So let's start with the gospel first. Right there in the middle of it, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. If we were to take a poll today here, even out on the streets, and ask people, what is your favorite verse of the Bible, I can almost guarantee that the highest amount of people would say John 3.16. Whether it's because they know it by heart, or because it's the only one they can remember, or it has deep meaning to them, I can bet that that will be the one. But it begs the question, why do we love this verse so much? Because frankly, I find it disturbing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. I'm disturbed because at its face value, this verse is telling us that some are saved, some are not. It almost seems to be a bit tarnished because it could be interpreted as a threat to those who don't believe in Jesus. Standing alone by itself, this verse is troubling. But we can't interpret Scripture that way by taking one verse, letting it stand on its own. John 3.16 is part of a larger reading today which is part of a larger conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Pharisees were interpreters of the law and, frankly, self-styled keepers of the law. Nicodemus came to Jesus in the middle of the night, and he said to Jesus that, you know, you're a great man, and, and I know that you're from God because the things that you do No one could do them unless they were from God. But he wanted to know more about what this meant when Jesus said, you must be born again. And Jesus rolls into these verses. Nicodemus was screaming out, tell me, show me, give me some sort of sign that helps me to believe in all of this. But the words that Jesus speaks to Nicodemus at this point can sound like condemnation. But here's the thing. God's not about condemnation. That is not what God is about. If we read the verses that follow, we hear this. Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And this is the judgment, 
that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness more than the light because their deeds were evil. The light had come into the world and we chose, people chose darkness. The judgment is not a judgment from God. It is a judgment on our own behalf. The people chose the darkness. Jesus is confronting Nicodemus with the truth, the truth that at some level Nicodemus wanted to believe and did believe. And Jesus is telling him, do you know who I am? You've said it. Come from the darkness. Come into the light. Condemnation is not a God thing. God is about healing and restoration and acceptance and mercy. And light for John, the writer of this gospel, it is about being in a relationship with Jesus. Two years ago, I, I experienced darkness in one of the worst ways possible. I was asked to preside at the funeral for my neighbor. Dana was 19 years old, had just graduated from high school that spring. She was engaged. She was planning on going on to be an artist. She was an incredibly lovely young lady who we saw grow up from a baby into this young adulthood. I still have, have visions of her playing in the leaves under this big maple tree that was in their front yard. Dana had been engaged at this young age, and the relationship fell apart. And Dana was killed by her former fiancé, who then took his life as well. It was the most difficult funeral that I've ever presided over, and I don't wish to do that again. The day after Dana's death, I met with her family, and in this great darkness, this sorrow and anger, righteous anger that they had towards this young man, I saw the light of Christ beaming through. For in their anger and in their sadness, they were concerned about the other family, wanting to make sure that they were being cared for as well. We came to find out later that the family went from church to church to church to church trying to find a place that would hold the funeral service. And they were turned down over and over and over again. Thankfully, one of, one of my colleagues in, in La Crosse said, yes, absolutely we'll do the funeral. And as he and I compared notes from our visits with the families, we found these incredible similarities of people who in their grief and in their sadness, in their trying to figure out what was going on, realized that there was light in this darkness. They weren't ready to speak to one another, but they cared genuinely about each other. At Dana's funeral, as typically happens at funerals, mourners walked past flowers and pictures of Dana, but they also walked past paintings and photographs that Dana had done. Dana had her times of deep darkness as well with depression, but through these pictures, through these paintings, you could see the light emerging from them. For Dana was evolving and becoming this incredible young woman who saw a future and was moving towards it. And we couldn't help through our tears and through our grief feel like Dana was holding up a sign in front of all of us, all of us saying, the light is present. Come, come to that light out of the darkness. It was an amazing experience to be part of that, to see that sign from her. In the wake of, of Tony Robinson's death, th there'll be more questions. There'll be more rallies, more protests, no matter what the findings are. 
There will be more signs proclaiming the truth from many different angles. Let us resist the temptation to lay blame. Let us resist the urge to look away and go on with our lives as if nothing ever happened. I want to say to all the young people who've been taking part in these rallies and in these marches, I applaud you for the peaceful nature of these protests. I urge you to channel your grief and your anger towards the light and finding ways to make Madison a better place to live. Don't just write about it on Facebook. Work for an agency that provides food for the hungry. Advocate for remedies for homelessness in our community. Engage respectfully in the conversations about race relations. Be agents for change, not just commentators on what is happening. And to all of us, all of us who are members of this community, we can't simply shake our heads and walk away. We must engage in these difficult conversations. We must listen respectfully to each other. These are conversations that no doubt will take place in all different spaces in our lives. These are conversations that might indeed bring out things in ourselves and in our community that we really don't want to talk about. We must work together to eliminate poverty in our community. We must bring this community together, recognizing that this isn't just a black issue or a blue issue, that it is our issue. And together, let us be proclaimers of the light. Let us help lead people out of the darkness. Let us hold high our signs that boldly proclaim that Jesus is Lord. And just as Jesus confronted Nicodemus with the realities of darkness and light, let us hold up our signs that read Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter and Latino ma Lives Matter and White Lives Matter and Asian Lives Matter and Dana's Life Mattered and Tony's Life Mattered and Old People's Lives Matter and Young People's Lives Matter and Your Life Matters and my life matters too. Can we be that bold? Can we be that daring to hold up the sign and hold up the light of Jesus? For God so very much loved and loves this world. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Worship at Bethel comes to you from downtown Madison, Wisconsin every Sunday at this time. We invite you to join us in person for worship. We gather for many different and unique services, including traditional, contemporary, festive, informal, family-oriented, Spanish, and Bhutanese. This program is funded entirely by viewer contributions. You may joyfully support us by means of electronic payments by visiting our online giving section of our website, where we have several payment options available. If you would like to contribute by writing, send your gifts to Media Ministry, 312 Wisconsin Avenue, Madison, Wisconsin, 53703. For more information about our ministries or how to sponsor a broadcast, please call us at 608-257-3577 or by visiting our website at www.bethel-madison.org where you'll find streaming versions of Worship at Bethel and information about our varied and exciting programs. Thank you for your continued support and join us next week for Worship at Bethel.